welcome to my channel again. I'm Allie at Allie P Reads, and this is my January wrap up. Um, I'm in a reading slump right now. I hate when that happens. I usually hit a reading slump like once or twice a year because I never consistently get fabulous books. Uh, but lately, like February is a struggle, <laughs> and it started because of January. Um, I read seven books in total, which is a slow month for me. I usually read about 10 a month, so seven's not great. There's supposed to be eight, but I DNF'd one because I didn't like it at all. So we'll get started. Uh, these aren't in order that I read them, so just take it as you will. Um, start with Take Me Apart by Sarah Sliger. Sliger, sorry, Sliger. My dog would start drinking now. <laughs> Many hours later. suicide and her son has hired a girl who is an archivist, archivist I believe basically hired an archivist to go through all her stuff and categorize it so that he can sell off whatever for the estate mm -hmm. um, and then she starts like going through her personal papers and kind of uncovering this woman's life and then starts to suspect that she might not have committed suicide. I didn't like it. Uh, very drenched in feminine, like feminist writing. My dog, man, just decides to make the most noise right now. <laughs> very drenched in feminist writing. Um, it wasn't thrilling. Didn't care. I didn't like anybody in this book. I thought the characters were terrible. Uh, I marked two quotes that I liked and the only thing that I liked about those quotes was that they were talking about how when women have mental breakdowns it's often like glamorized in the media and it's true you know but you know what skip the fucking book not good next book I have is Fever Dream by Samantha Shrevelin this is translated Brazilian from Buenos Aires sorry oh she lives in Berlin so um a few star um I wanted this to be good I love the cover I think the cover is fabulous you are reading a fever dream basically a woman's um on her deathbed in the hospital and there's a little boy sitting at the bottom of her bed but it's not her son and he's trying to get her to tell the story about how she ended up there to him it's short I just didn't I didn't like the writing style but I also just I wanted more I think I, I went into it with a higher expectation and I was disappointed um, what I do like about this and something I think that horror can do very well is there's a commentary on pesticides and what chemicals are being put into the environment and how is it actually affecting us um so that was a really good aspect of the book which is why i didn't give a one star but i just didn't like it so i can't recommend this to anybody unfortunately <laughs> my dnf the bell jar by sylvia plath i fucking hate this book um not off to a good start <laughs> this year with classics and modern classics um and i'm trying to read more not getting through it. Um, but Sylvia Plath has a poetry collection called Ariel, and there's a poem in there that I, I love. I love her writing. It's just, I just didn't care. 
And it's sad that they didn't care because, you know, Sylvia Plath struggled with depression and it, it, you know, she ended up committing suicide. So this feels very personal, obviously, but it just, it just wasn't for me. I felt like it was just dragging on. I don't know if this is autobiographical. I don't think it is. Other than that, she knows the struggle of someone with depression. I just didn't give a shit. It just felt like it was dragging and dragging. And I didn't care about the main character enough to continue and try to push through it. So, unpopular opinion again. Because this book is incredibly popular. And Sylvia Plath is a great writer. I just DNF'd it. I didn't fucking like it at all. Didn't care. Did save me, though. <laughs> Long Bright River. By Liz Moore. This was on Obama's 2020 uh, Books of the Year, and rightfully so, because it's fucking amazing. Uh, not one of my favorites, just because I, di I didn't get that, like, wow factor from it, but I would recommend this to anybody. I think it's a fabulous read. It's a sister story, too, which is nice. Um, basically what it is, uh, one sister is a cop in Philadelphia, and the other sister is a addict. Um, and she's a prostitute now. So a bunch of prostitutes end up being like found dead and they think it's just drug related but then it seems like there's actually murder at play and her sister is missing. So this cop ends up being like desperate to find out what happened to her sister and hoping that her sister doesn't turn out to be one of these victims. Uh, this is really really good. It feels very real reading it like this is a fabulous book I would recommend this to anybody especially if you're into like crime and sister stories this is so good <laughs> so good so at least I've had one really good book so far <laughs> this year <laughs> this next book is I don't know if uh, I would recommend it to everybody um, I read Putney by how do you say her name Sofka Zinyal from Sorry. Uh, <laughs> basically, this is a modern post Me Too Lolita. Um, but we, the interesting thing about this book, I gave it a three star. The interesting thing was it tells the story from the victim's perspective, the perpetrator's perspective, but also there was a witness. So it comes from a, a witness perspective, which is one of the victim's friends. Um, Again, that story, she doesn't feel like she was a victim. Uh, if you know the story of Lolita, you get the gist of what this is. I love the cover. Um, again, content warnings. I don't know if I could recommend it for everybody because there were some scenes that were very difficult to read. Um, but that alternating perspective made it good for me. So read it if you would like if you're into it like if you like Lolita which I think Lolita is a hard book to like I never actually read it though um I don't know this is a hard one to recommend but it was good and um I think a lot of books kind of came out in this Me Too era so they're worth a read so three star I liked it my only five star pick Silence of Bonaventure Arrow by Rita Lazansky. I bought this book when I was working at Indigo. Uh, well, it was chapters then. Uh, in 2014, and the receipt is still in here. I never picked this book up. It sat on my shelf, and then every time I did a purge, I kept looking at it. I'm like, I really love the cover, and the, in, the story sounds intriguing, so I think I'm going to keep it. I'm going to try to read it. And then I finally picked it up, and I can't believe I waited so long to read it because this book is fucking amazing. Um, about a boy who is born mute, but for no reason, they can't find a medical reason because of it. Um, but while his mother was pregnant, uh, his father was murdered in the street for apparently no reason, just done by a madman, they say. Oh my God, this book is so good. It's so beautiful. Um, this book has a lot to do with purpose in life and um, spirituality and whether or not we have a predestination, whether or not 
things happen for a reason and everybody's separated and they're meant to come together when, you know, when they're supposed to. Uh, and it all centers around this little boy who, although he's mute, has like astounding hearing um, and he can like hear colors they describe and it's so good. It's so cute. Uh, and again, my cold dead heart did shed a, a small, like, it got me a little. <laughs> I read it in like two or three days, I think. It was just, it's so beautiful. And it has a twist. And I didn't see the twist coming. And oh my god, I just love it. And I, I do love ideas and stories about predestination and things happening for a reason and this is so beautiful please read it and and anything set in new orleans i mean just the descriptions of things is just fabulous it's so good five star love it favorite new favorite this next book i hate this fucking book i fucking hate it the need by helen phillips what the fuck is this book? Um, I wanted to like this. I had heard so much about this and the, the original like British cover, the picture here, uh, is what intrigued me. But this, I got it cheap, thank God. Um, this is definitely for a niche audience. <laughs> Don't let the premise fool you. The premise is basically, um, a woman is at home with her toddler and her baby and an intruder comes in in like a deer mask it said old cover um, and basically this person knows too much about her and sits her down and confronts her on her life um, I don't have kids God willing one day I will but Maybe I'll revisit this then because this book is basically like a mother's horror story, but it's not relatable at all. Like um, I talked about in my like best books of 2020 and stuff, I talked about a book called Baby Teeth and I mean, that's a mother horror story because she thinks her daughter is going to kill her. But this book, there was like graphic things about breastfeeding and postpartum and like oh my god it just went on and on and on it's like a bad version of Jordan Peele's Us but motherhood centric if you do decide to read this after having your baby or a toddler and being a tired mother I would like to know if you did find this horrifying and really like it because I'm pretty sure that that's who this is for and no one else is going to like it unless you're in that position because maybe after I have kids one day, I can reread this and be like, oh my God, I was wrong. But reading this now as I stand, is fucking terrible. I hated it. One star. I fucking hated it. I can't even believe I finished it. Again, I wanted to like it, but... This last book, I could do, and I love this last book. Um, Car Sick by John Waters. Uh, my version is beat up because I got it a scratch and dead bent and I taped it because I was so desperate to keep the cover on. Um, if you don't know who John Waters is, um, I know a lot of people don't, but uh, he is the Pope of Trash, as he says. He is a filth elder. Uh, John Waters is the writer and director of Hairspray, most famously, and Crybaby, and Pink Flamingos, if you're into, like, underground cult movies. Um, <laughs> this book is so good. Uh, basically what it is, is John Waters decided at 66 to hitchhike across America um, and wrote a book about it. He basically went from the front of his house in Baltimore to his apartment in San Diego hitchhiking. Um, I gave it a three star. I think if you don't know who John Waters is, it's still funny. Like there was a point in this book I marked off. I laughed out loud and I highlighted it. I laughed my ass off. Um, it's so good. But 
the thing I didn't like about it, which I knocked stars off, was because the first part of the book is how what he imagines best case scenario. The second part is what he imagines worst case scenario. And then the third part is what actually happened, which I really just wanted to read what actually happened. But um, I think mass market appeal, this would be it. John Waters has other books that I happen to prefer. But this is still a good book. And it was funny. Um, he has a, like a sign that he made. He had like various cardboard signs. <laughs> And one of them just says, not a psycho. <laughs> and I thought that was like, so, so clever. And it was so good. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a fun read. It was a fun memoir. Uh, try to read. I'm trying to read like a nonfiction a month. So this is it. I liked it. But again, it might not be for everybody. So that was my January read. Again, not great. I didn't have a good reading month, which then turned into a February reading slump. So I'm hoping that I'll have better books for you for February's wrap up because I'm not on a good roll so far. Um, yeah. Let me know uh, if you like any of these and what your thoughts are um, on any of these because I would love to hear. Uh, I know our opinions are not going to be the same. All I can do is recommend what I read and what I know. And uh, I hope you find something. My dog, I think, needs to go out. So I'm going to end this here. Thanks for coming. Bye.